everybody. We are going to take up an argument that is found in the new book, Living in the Days of Deception, Replacement Theology, and how well do you know scripture to argue your position that the church and Israel are two separate entities, says God. Let's get into it. Real Life presents the Jack Hibbs Podcast with intention and boldness to proclaim truth, equip the saints, and impact our culture. Today, if this podcast lifts you up and encourages you to live a more fulfilled life in Christ, then make sure you leave us one of those five-star ratings. To us, that's like saying amen or yes. Then that rating will encourage others to listen. Now open your hearts to what God's Word has to say to you. Here is Jack Hibbs. Hey, everybody. Listen, uh, you're in a hurry. I'm in a hurry. We're going to make this brief, but hopefully powerful. With all that's going on in the world right now, uh, I mean, there's fires burning in every direction. And uh, I even heard last night through some law enforcement personnel that there's uh, people, uh, uh, alerts are heightened for this coming summer in America for wildfires and all this stuff, terrorism, blah, blah, blah. All this is taking place in the midst of the flurry of insanity and craziness. It is so important to address what's going on in the church in the world. And when I say the church, uh, we are finding out every day who is in the church and what what is the church. Um, one of the things about being the church in the last days is recognizing your place, recognizing who and what you are. The church is the church of the living God, the espoused bride of Christ who is engaged. Scripture clearly implies to us in the New Testament to the Son of God who's coming back, the Bible says, to receive us to himself that we might experience, book of Revelation, the marriage supper of the Lamb and it is the church, the church, 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 church. And uh, she is found in the book of, Reve well, she's found in the Bible, New Testament, all the way up to Revelation chapter four, verse one. She's never again seen on earth, uh, but discovered in heaven somehow, how'd she get there? In Revelation chapter 19, where she is rejoicing and she is wearing her fine linen, clean and bright, which is the righteous acts of the saints. And she is on a white horse uh, and she is wearing a crown. She is uh, following uh, hmm, someone whose face is as white or bright as the sun, whose eyes are as a flame of fire. Out of his mouth goes a sharp to its sword, and we follow him from heaven to earth in the second coming. His foot's going to hit the Mount of Olives, it says. It's going to just split open. Water's going to come gushing out, Ezekiel tells us, Zechariah tells us, and that he lands in Jerusalem, and the Bible says that we are with him, the bride of Christ, and then he establishes his judgment seat where he divides the sheep from the goats, Matthew chapter 25, and he judges those based on how the world treated his brethren, the Jews. And then after that judgment, uh, the those who are condemned are taken away to judgment and those who are deemed acceptable, those are mortals, not the church. They live into the millennial kingdom, and that is where we rule and reign with him for a thousand years. It's called the millennium. Jesus Christ must sit on the throne of David during the millennium. All that to say, the church, and I wonder if you caught it, the church is 100% different and separate from Israel. Jesus returns to Jerusalem, the Bible says. Jesus returns to Israel, not Palestine. Not Aila Capitolina, Jerusalem. Not Palestine, not Aila Capitolina, but Israel, Jerusalem. Jesus sits on the throne of David, not Muhammad. David, the Bible says. And so in saying this real quick, and we'll pick it up some other time in, in a deeper uh, podcast together. But just know this right now. There are people who are getting all messed up. And I'm loving, I'm sorry to tell you, I'm loving every moment of it. Because these are people who 
tampered with their Bible in the first place, and they took Israel because they, listen, because they have an end time worldview that's different than what the Bible teaches, they wound up saying, hmm, I guess Adolf Hitler was correct. Um, and some of the, some of the uh, reformers were correct. Listen, the reformers were awesome, but boy, they had, they had end time theology completely messed up. Look, I'm a big fan of Charles Spurgeon, but you never read Charles Spurgeon regarding the book of Daniel or Bible prophecy. He's a, he's a devotional teacher when it comes to prophecy. He doesn't take it literally. Well, all of a sudden, the Bible we discover, Israel's a nation again, and it became a nation in one day, Isaiah chapter 66. And all that is a precursor to God calling his people back into their own land. For example... Ezekiel chapter 36, you got to read it slow. And all around verse 26, chapter 36, verse 26, God tells the Jews, I'm going to bring you back into your land. By the way, you're going to come back into your own land that I promised to your fathers. Figure that one out. What could that be? I, t I tell you what, it's not California. Okay, it's not London. It's not Mozambique. It's Israel. The only promised land in the Bible is Israel to the Jewish people. God says, right before the end time scenario sets off, I got to bring you back into your own land. Oh, and by the way, here's a clue. You're going to come back into your own land in unbelief. People today are saying Israel is a legitimate, illegitimate nation because they don't believe in Jesus. Of course they don't believe in Jesus. What's wrong with you? The Bible says they would return not believing in Jesus. They would return in unbelief. Unbelief. The Bible's perfect. They've been returning since 1890 to Jerusalem, to Israel. And even today in the 21st century, the year 2024, the nation doesn't believe. In fact, many Jews in Israel are atheists, so they claim. This is all in the scriptures, but there's going to be events once they're back into their own land that is going to cause them to open their eyes to belief. One of them, it seems to be the trigger itself, is the Ezekiel chapter 38 battle, where they begin to start believing. And so that is a very important thing. But here's the point that I want to leave with you most, most powerfully is this. Jeremiah chapter 31 Beginning at verse 31. That's easy to remember, by the way, right? Jeremiah 31, 31. Listen to this. Now, I want all of you replacement theology guys to check this out. And um, I take great delight, by the way, in you trying to go through all kinds of Bible conniptions and uh, seizures uh, because you're going to try to explain this away. So good luck. May, may the luck of the Lord be with you because that's all you got. This is what the Bible says. Okay? Behold, the days are coming. Says the Lord, by the way, it says Yah, Y-A-H. That's the name of God. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Well, what could that mean? Well, I don't know. Let's just keep reading. And with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day, I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. Is this specific or what? My covenant, which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. After what days? After the days of God being done with the first covenant. The first covenant's going to be removed. It's going to be complete, fulfilled. It's going to expire. And a new covenant is going to start. Okay? So this is very important because, friends, listen, we're living in the days of deception. That's why I wrote the book, Living in the Days of Deception. Well, here's a shameless plug. You can get it everywhere books are sold, but uh, you can also buy it at jackgibbs.com. Okay? Why? Because we cover about a good section regarding replacement theology. But listen up, everybody. 
This is why you should not be deceived. And if you're in a church that teaches that the church is going to go through the tribulation period because the church is now Israel, you need to run and never return to that church. I'm dead serious. Because if they're messed up on that, then they're messed up on other doctrines. And they're also calling God a liar based upon Jeremiah 31. All right. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel in, in after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds, not on stone, right? Not on a rock. And I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. You hear that? <laughs> hey, you're going to come back into your land. You're not going to know me. But I'm going to instigate, initiate. I'm going to pull the trigger after you guys are back in your own land and you're going to start to understand that I'm your God and you're my people. I keep my promises. Um, no more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man, his brother saying, know the Lord for they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them says the Lord for I will forgive their iniquity and their sins. I will remember no more. Friends, listen, what's going on right now with Israel and the war and all the rhetoric? Don't panic, everybody. Don't worry. Don't get nervous. And listen, my, my friends in Israel, don't worry. Turn your eyes to the Lord. That's what you should be doing right now. Turn your eyes to the Lord. Hey, let me be blunt. You're, you're in a war where your enemy is seeking your total annihilation. Okay. And if anybody knows anything about Islam, Islam cannot be a success until there's no more Jews and until Israel is obliterated. That's part of the function of the Mahdi. The Mahdi is the Islamic savior. And Islam teaches that Israel has got to be demolished and the world has got to be on fire to usher in their Messiah, the Mahdi. Well, listen, the Jews today need to fight for their lives. There's going to be wars and there's going to be big wars. There's going to be wars until the Prince of Peace returns. That's Jesus. In the meantime, God says to Israel, in this time of battle, turn to me. Right now, Israel is fighting with the state-of-the-art weaponry. But Israel needs to turn their heart toward the Lord and let the Lord fight their battles. You say, well, how about, how's that going to happen? Like it always has happened. God told Joshua. God told Moses. God told David. God told his warriors, go to battle tomorrow. I will be with you. Did you hear that, everybody? Pastor, I can't believe the pastor's saying that. Oh, we need to grow up. Listen, here's the truth, okay? God told Israel, go to battle tomorrow. In fact, right now, Israel, sanctify yourself. Don't eat anything unclean. Don't sleep with any women tonight because I want you to be pure. Tomorrow you go to battle and I'm going to deliver the enemy into your hands. And as you go and fight, I will go before you. The reason why God went before Israel in those days is because Israel turned to God and sought him and God showed up. Today, yes, it's true. Today, Israel's fighting for its life. The problem is, yes, God is watching Israel. Yes, God will fulfill his word, but it's all, listen, it's all for this reason. God is waiting for you, the Jewish people, to turn your hearts toward him, to call out upon him. Read Psalm 118. Call out to the Lord. Shout to him, Hosanna. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Do that. And so, friends, listen, the fact is this. Replacement theology robs you of all confidence of Scripture and Bible prophecy. Some great names, and some of them I have their books on my shelf because I know in this area they're crazies but they do a great job on Mark's gospel. Okay. I just, I just know my Bible. I read them through my Bible. So this particular author is a replacement theology nut, but man, is he good in the book of Romans? So I know what to leave out. 
okay? But I would never read him for first and second Thessalonians. I would never read him for the book of Revelation, Daniel or Ezekiel. They go off the rails. Let the Bible be the Bible. Judge everything that you hear and read through the word of God. But know this, everybody, that Israel is not the church and the church is not Israel. For all time and eternity, they're completely separate entities. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah that Israel is already married to Jehovah. Israel is married to God the Father. The church is engaged to God the Son. The Jew is married to the Father. The predominantly, not totally, but the predominantly Gentile bride, kind of like Ruth is married to Boaz. Think of that. Rahab, she's in the genealogy of the Messiah. Well, the church is predominantly, not exclusively, but predominantly Gentile. Who's she married to? Well, she's not married yet. The Bible says she's engaged to Christ Jesus. So this is very important, very key. If your church teaches replacement theology, that Israel has no right to exist, then they're playing right into the deceptive plot of Satan himself, and they're lockstep in line with Islam and anti-Semitic people who do not know the scriptures. So don't tell me that you've got a degree from XY University and you don't believe in Israel now. You just got your doctorate in theology from where? And you don't believe in the viable nation of Israel even in this moment of unbelief? Wow. Uh, wow. All I could say is, wow, you've been deceived. Read the Bible. Let it speak for itself. This is a topic that we need to take up later on and deeper. But, man, this is a life or death moment. Because if somebody says to you, yeah, I know it says right here that there's going to be 144,000 Jews during the tribulation period that speak Hebrew, virgin, male, undefiled, Hebrew, 12,000 men from each tribe of the nation of Israel preaching the gospel during the tribulation period. But what that really means is, you know, metaphorically speaking, that's what's going on here. These are, these are types. These are typologies and metaphors. And you know what? I don't know what to say. I'm going to watch my mouth right now because I kind of feel like Nehemiah. I'd grab that person by the beard and drag them out of the church because that is an assault on the word of God and what God has said. No, nope, my friends, listen. You must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. Read John chapter 3. So I'm a longtime member of the First Baptist Church of whatever town. My father was the pastor. My grandfather was the pastor. My, I'm the fifth generation. I didn't ask you that. Jesus said, you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. John chapter 3. Are you born again? Are you the choir director? That's your defense? I'm the choir director. Now, so what? I'm a pastor of the biggest church in my town. That doesn't make it good. What do you know about the scriptures regarding the difference? Can you argue the difference? I'll, listen, I'll give you two answers here. One's easy, one's hard. Can you show someone else, including yourself, from the New Testament, the difference between the church and Israel? Now, here's the hard one. Can you show, can you find the difference in the Old Testament from the mystery, the church, that's not revealed by the name church in the Old Testament? Can you find Gentiles who are saved in the Old Testament that are different from Israel in the Old Testament? I can. All over the place. So should you be able to. Stuff that should make you think. These are critical days. Friends, listen. As always, we believe it's time to live out what it is that you believe in. It's time for real life. And real life is knowing the word of God and living it out. 
So listen, I hope this stirred the pot a little bit, get you thinking. Don't email me right away. Don't, don't call me up and start cussing me out. Uh, if you're going to cuss me out, have a good reason. D do some homework. If you email me, I, listen, I get all kinds of comments. Get to the point. Just say, I don't understand this. I need help. Okay, we can work with that. But if you just e email me to say, I don't like you. Look, I don't know if I like you either. But the Bible says we're supposed to dwell together, right? The Bible says in Romans, live together as much as it is possible. You may be born again, but you're saying, nope, nope, Israel's zero gone. Nah, listen, friend, you can be enlightened from the Bible, okay? This has nothing to do with personalities. It has everything to do with God's bedrock truth. Until next time, God bless you. Stay in the Word. This Jack Hibbs podcast, as well as all the broadcast outreach opportunities, are listener supported. Will you consider partnering with us through a special gift? Go to jackhibbs.com to learn more and stay connected. Thank you.